Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a, another episode of the Success Shift. We are coming along nicely in the year. Time is flying. Um, I was doing some editing yesterday. Realized we're getting close to episode 150, which I can't believe. I swear, only yesterday I was at like episode 20. Um, just goes to show what consistency does and just showing up. <clears throat> um, I'm very grateful for the growth. And the progress, I was just saying uh, before we started recording this, that um, it's nice to finally be dotting those I's and crossing those T's and getting some things ticked off the the, the list that's been kind of in the build for a while. Um, my most recent ebook sent to print to see if we can get that in paperback and got the journal back up for sale, which is nice. And then going to try and get that um, slightly altered so we can get that into distribution and uh, the trading plan course well underway in the beta phase lots of good feedback and um, yeah making a bit of headway on the mindset course as well so everything's just coming along which is amazing i'm beyond grateful for all the support and opportunities that i've been getting and it's just a good feeling but today i'm extremely grateful for my friends because as a traveler and as someone who's moved out of home and across the other side of the world, you don't catch up with your friends as much. And um, this weekend, I've got three of my really close friends, um, all from high school that are coming from all corners of the world. One from Belgium. I mean, we're all from originally from Perth, but one's on a Euro trip. One lives in England and one lives in Belgium. And we're all meeting here for Oktoberfest over the weekend. So I am beyond grateful for having friends that are willing to travel and friends that are coming to see, to see me on the weekend. So Good times ahead. Nice way to relax and debrief from a few stressful weeks, but uh, progressive weeks. And yeah, it's, it's really amazing. I uh, highly recommend pushing as hard as you can in your businesses and your endeavors, but also finding that balance and, and ways that you can relax and give back to yourself. And uh, this is one that I'm really looking forward to. So good weekend ahead. I'm excited. Hope you all are too. Hope you've had some awesome things happening the week. Uh, some gratitude coming in about progress that's awesome grateful for progress this morning um which i love to hear it's always good to get progress happening and um, today we're going to dive into a little bit of an extension of yesterday's topic yesterday we we're talking about you know murphy's law and how everything that can happen will happen and usually at the worst time and sometimes it can get all overwhelming um and we just get inundated and we don't know what to do and sometimes on the charts it can just blow our accounts and be really detrimental and the main important thing is to really focus on those times the moments where it does get tough the moments where it does feel like everything's happening at once and trying to find strength and discipline and control in those times because a lot of the time you hear traders go i need to get into better trades i need to get into better trades but the truth is we probably just need to get into less shitty trades uh more isn't always better you know sometimes less is more and especially in trading if we just minimize it down and really make sure we take the best entries, uh, then we will probably be better off because it's not so much, you know, like I said, about entering more good trades, but sometimes it's about entering less bad trades. And this comes from that discipline that comes from um, the pickiness. And I was talking today on um, one of my coaching calls about <clears throat> the potential for a trade uh, lots of the time, sometimes as greedy traders, we can look at, oh, this trade could X, Y, Z, and you know we over-exaggerate the potential. Sometimes we're really disciplined and we look exactly at what the potential is in the sense that like this is where I'm first expecting it. Is there enough potential for this trade to for me to make it to that first expected level? If so, yes, I can enter. Okay. And so um, having those expectations, uh, having, sorry, understanding that potential and making sure that we're very picky and that we're very decisive and really only taking the best of the best and not lying to ourselves as well. I feel that there's two aspects to this. Some people can over-exaggerate and some people can under-exaggerate. Is, is that right? I'm not sure if that's how it's um, said, but I'm just going to mute. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I was having to mute some background noise. Um so yeah, we were talking about Murphy's Law and we we're talking about all the things that can get on top of us and how in those times we just need to prioritize, execute and handle our emotions. And so what I really wanted to talk about today was kind of how we can go about that when it gets on top of us, when it gets too much, when things are really feeling a bit overwhelming, uh, how do we stay calm and collected? 
And I think this can kind of go back to that. I'm sure we've heard Do uh, Bob Proctor talk about this, the thought, feeling, action. First of all, we have a thought. Then whichever thought remains in our head the longest and grows, and we repeat those thoughts, that brings up emotion and gives us a feeling. And when that feeling is strong enough, what happens? We take an action. So this is that emotional feedback loop sometimes because that action will then create a change in the circumstances, which then creates another thought. And on the charts, this can be seen as, okay, I think this trade is going to take off and I don't, and I want to make sure that I'm in it. I don't want to miss out. And so you have this feeling like, oh, if it does go, I'm going to miss out. And then this FOMO comes and then you're trading with emotion. So you take action and you jump in anyway. And then it starts to go against you. And so you go, oh no, this is turning around. The thought happens. This is definitely turning around. Ah, I'm scared. Feeling happens. Take action, exit. And then it goes off in your direction. So this is that feedback loop of thought. The thought grows. The feeling, the emotion grows even more. And then we have that action. Now, how can we break this cycle? Well, first of all, trading plan. That's the, the obvious answer is to have a trading plan and just follow the rules. But let's go a little bit deeper than that because not everyone has a trading plan and even the people who do have a trading plan struggle to follow it. And so we need to find up a breaking point where we can separate from that emotional cycle and get, get back to the trading plan. Um, and that is this difference between feeling and behavior. Okay, there's a gap between the feeling and the action or behavior. So feeling emotion, action behavior. We have an increase in feeling and emotion, so much so that it drives us to do an action or a behavior. But we have a choice right in the middle of this step, shall we say, to break that cycle. So we know a thought and a feeling comes, and that is fine because it's all internal, but it only becomes um, a situation or it only becomes external when we take the action when we take the behavior think about okay this trade is going to go to the moon and i'm not going to be in it so i'm going to enter i'm going to enter all that stuff is being not not being acted upon at the moment so this is all mental however at the time it feels like it's everything because you're not vocalizing sometimes it's it's, it's all happening in the head and you're trying to make a decision and it's only once we actually press buy or press sell that that behavior takes place and so it's in this moment that we have the ability to break habits, to break behaviors, to cut ties, to make a difference in decision. And this comes through practice. And so we always talk about pattern recognition, pattern interruption. You take your trades, you journal your emotions, you realize the emotions that, are, that you're feeling. And ideally, you realize the emotions that you're feeling. And then you can see through tracking the actions that you've taken and the results that have come from that. And so next time you have this emotional feeling, you realize that last time, this is what happened. So I need to come up with a pattern interruption. I need to do something in order to break this cycle. So thought happens. I can feel the feelings coming. Am I going to allow the usual repeat habitual behavior, which does not serve me well? Or am I going to go, right, feelings are coming. I need something to, to break this up. And that is the point in where your emotional tracking and your emotional journey, journaling can be utilized to understand yourself in a way that allows you to make that separation. And so when all the stuff's bad's happening, maybe when you've had a losing trade, maybe when you're in the second trade and you're waiting for the setup and you can feel your body, you can feel the emotions. Like, I've been here before. This is a familiar feeling. It's at this moment we need to make the decision. Do we go left or do we go right? Do we red pill, blue pill? Do we do the same repeat behavior or do we do something different? And if we can't do something different, we need to put in an action in that maybe isn't, let's say, Rather than staying out of a trade in this moment of, I want to enter, I don't want to enter. Rather than staying out of the trade, we need to do something different. So let's, rather than not doing an action, which is kind of what we need to do sometimes. So this is a bit convoluted, but some of the times we see something happening and we know we need to not do an action. We need to not press the button. We need to sit out and be patient. Well, sometimes not doing something is 10 times harder than actually doing something for a lot of people. So you can put in place a doing something action. So you need the thought, the feeling, then the behavior is what comes out with the result. Now, what we can do is shift that behavior and go, okay, instead of pressing buy, maybe I'm going to get up and do two push-ups because I know I shouldn't be pressing the buy button here, but I need to do something. So maybe I'll do two push-ups. Maybe it's, you know what? I should be, I want to be pressing buy button, but I know I shouldn't. I'm going to have a sip of water and I'm going to use that to maybe take a few breaths and separate myself. And so the thought comes, the feeling's there, 
what is the behavior that we're going to take? What is the behavior that we usually take and does it serve us well? And what is the behavior we should be doing? Now, some people will have the ability to realize this. And this is the point I'm trying to get across that pattern recognition. Okay. This is a familiar pattern. Here comes that feeling. What is my behavior? The pattern interruption is noticing that feeling and not doing the same detrimental behavior, but putting something in place or noticing and doing nothing. Some people will be able to go, I'm noticing this. This is my time to shut off. This is my time. Hit reset. The emotions are coming. I need to cut it here. Think about something else because I can feel the spiral coming. Some people will go, ah, this is the thing. What is my distraction? What is my next action? For me, I had the, um, my emotions would come very quickly when I hit my full stop loss. And that would then spiral into the thought, feeling action of, of randomly hitting the button or revenge trading or over leveraging. So my pattern interruption was closing my eyes because then I can't see the charts. I can't analyze. And while I was in that state, so it was kind of like a step-by-step. -step. So close your eyes, take your deep breaths. This is going to lower the heart rate, reduce that stress. You know, we've spoke about this in the past, that the way that the amygdala works and the dopamine responses and how breathing can help with the blood flow and the heart um the the pressure in the heart etc and reduce that stress level so that now the emotions are being diminished that was what i needed that is what worked for me it was the pattern recognition of the feeling of how i felt immediately after i hit a full stop loss then the interruption was closing my eyes so i could no longer um, assess what was happening on the charts and then it was the process of breathing to calm myself drink my water do my journaling and it was a habit stacking system, which ended up being a really good routine. Now, again, that's not necessarily going to work for everyone. And the main thing here is I want just to understand that when shit hits the fan, when you start to take these losing trades, when, you know, we're talking yesterday about how you can have two weeks and then that one day that spirals, this is the important point of when this pattern recognition and pattern interruption is key. It's how do we handle ourselves during these times? It's when those feelings start to compile, how do we get out of them quicker? You know, sometimes you even realize you're doing them, but it, you can't stop yourself from taking the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh trade. And it's only afterwards you're like, why did I do this again? And so this is the power of emotional journey and this journaling, and this is the power of going through it and understanding yourself. Once you understand yourself, you can understand the patterns and therefore you can find behaviors which interrupt the regular behavior and come out with something more disciplined. And the idea here is that over time, you do this repeat, 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 you end up narrowing down and getting closer and closer to your um, ability to not respond. So you have the feeling, you have the thoughts, you have the feeling, you acknowledge them, and you're able to dismiss them. And you go back to the trading plan. You, you're in a trade and it's not going your way and you start to panic and you, you realize and you send to yourself and go back to the trading plan. Okay, wait, let's, I, I can see that I'm getting emotionally manipulated by the ticks here. What does my trading plan say? Wait till candle closure. Okay, take a deep breath, wait till candle closure, then respond. So all these things, they layer on each other. And to finalize, it's kind of on top of that ability to let go, because I think that once we start to hold on, now we we're speaking about this uh, yesterday, I think, once and last week with emotional detachments, once we hold on to them, and these, these thoughts and these mistakes and these behaviors, then they affect the next action or response, shall we say. So let's say you take a loss and then you're mad at that loss and you can't forgive yourself, you don't let it go. That thought is stuck in your head, which then promotes the next feeling of frustration, anger, whatever it is. Uh, and then that makes it easier to jump into that bad behavior and harder to recognize and jump into the, the good distractive behavior. Is this making sense to people? Like someone's in the chat. Um, I know it's a little bit of a, um, circular concept, but it really is the way that I was able to make changes. I know lots of people come into trading and come into mindset and come into lessons like, I just want to know what the trick is. Like, tell me the trick and I can change it and then I'll be good. But to be perfectly honest, the, the trick is learn how to learn yourself because you're always going to be changing. And just like there's no two people the same, there's no two days on the chart that are the same. Yes, there is very familiar patterns and behaviors that look similar, act in the same way, but they are not the same. Just like there's lots of people who are very similar looking, have similar behaviors, hang out in the same groups, like the same things, but they are not the same. No two people are the same, not even identical twins are the same. Very close, but not quite. Just like trading, no two days on the charts are ever going to be the same because what makes the day on the charts is 
the summation of every single person's emotion on that day who is emotional enough or has enough of a feeling that they're going to either buy or sell. Whether that's very disciplined and controlled feeling or whether it's completely emotional and outrageous, it does not matter. But every single person who is willing to place a trade on that day makes up that trading day. And therefore, it's never going to be two days that are exactly the same. Just like there's never going to be two people. That's why trading teaching, uh, teaching trading isn't as simple as just one size fits all. It's learn a strategy, but then more importantly, learn how you behave relative to that strategy. Learn how you behave relative to money. Learn how you behave relative to the candle manipulation that you see in front of you. And so the key, the key to being successful at trading is learn how to learn yourself. Find out ways that you can understand yourself, that you can put it on paper and then review it and realize, okay, this is me. This is the true me. This is what I thought I was, but this is what I'm actually doing. This was the behaviors I thought I could control. These are the behaviors that I can't control. And then only over time, doing this process over and over again, will you start to realize these are the things that serve me well and these are the things that don't. I mean, this can be taken for anything in life. You want to get good at something, practice it, track it, review it, make the changes. Practice it, track it, review it, make the changes. You know, I'm sure you've all seen professional sports players who do their sport, watch the video recordings, sit down with their coach, their mentor, figure out how they can do that better, and then go and put that into practice and repeat. It's the same sort of thing, right? It's do the action, track it, review it, make the changes, do the action. And it's just this process. And that's what we need to be doing here. That's what we need to be doing with trading. Take the action, track it, review it, make the changes, maybe ask a mentor, get some coaching, look up to someone who knows what they're doing, ask questions, find places where you can get that information, go to online courses, go watch YouTube videos, whatever it is for you that you need to do to make those changes. Um, then make the changes, do the action, track it, review it, make the changes. Okay. It's very cyclical, but very beneficial as well. Um, for me, I thought for a long time, I could just come on here, sit and just do the same process and eventually it would stick. But it wasn't until I realized that, hang on, if I want this to be my life, if I want to make this as a profession, if I want to do this like the professionals do and make big money, which is very, very plausible in this field, then I'm going to put in the work to do what the professionals do. What do they do? Action, track, review, change. Action, track, review, change. So why not do the exact same thing on the charts? And not only that, but it was doing that with a strategy and then doing that with myself. How do I behave? How do I respond? How do I you know, relate to this scenario, that scenario? And it was only through this that you realize and you grow. And I'm still growing. I've still got a long way to go. But it's that process. Once you get that process down, then it can be applied to anything. And then it's just a matter of your determination if you want to make it or if you don't. If you have the ability this is what I want to change. Okay, let's start tracking it. Let's start looking at it, reviewing it, getting help from a professional, figuring out how I can change it, and then doing it again. Has that worked? Is there something else I need to change? Is there another thing that I can look at shifting? Okay. So I kind of went off on a bit of a tangent, but still the, the same concept applies in the sense that what makes us really successful is how we handle the tough times, how we handle the losses, how we handle when everything falls to pieces. And how we can break that cycle up is by tracking our emotions and tracking our behaviors and doing this, you know, finding the, inter the pattern interruption between the thought, the feeling or the emotion, the action behavior. We can have thoughts. We can have thoughts that repeat so much so that they bring up a feeling or an emotion. That is human behavior. That is what actually is making us humans and making us who we are. However, how we behave or how we act upon those thoughts and feelings is what the world sees and that's what gives the reaction the the results so you can have whatever thoughts and feelings you you want how you respond and react to those thoughts and feelings is going to give you the results on the charts and it's going to be the characteristics that people see in you and it's going to be how other people define you not how you define yourself because you might have a completely different world view of you by the thoughts and feelings and the battles that you have within your head and the ones that you win the ones that you lose but the ones you present to the world by acting upon those are what other people are going to see you as. That's what the trades that you're going to take will give the results. And so notice the thoughts, notice the feelings, notice the emotions, and then decide. These thoughts, feelings, they come up regularly. This is the behaviors that I usually do. 
Is this serving me? Yes, no. Okay, it is. Great, we can repeat this process. These are the thoughts and behaviors. Is this serving me? No, I need to put something in place here so that I don't do this thing again. And usually that thing again is the revenge trading, is the over trading, is the leveraging, is moving stop loss. You know, these emotional based, non consistent behaviors. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. This is the best advice I think I've ever received. This can help you in every aspect of your life, not only trading. Thank you, Jake. Yeah, it truly does. It, it's uh, th uh, you, You've heard me say this before. Trading is the best personal development program in the world. You get paid the most by being the best personally developed. Why? Because you learn yourself to such a level. Then you have the discipline and the control on the charts, and that pays you whatever amount you're capable of. There is no limit. Same thing, any aspect of life. You do this same process. You can have the growth and the development in any aspect of life. So yeah, it, it really can. And th this is the exact reason. This whole episode basically is why I call trading the best personal development program in the world. That's just the way I see it. Um, I know how much I've developed in the last, I'd say I first ran into trading four years ago and I've been very serious about it for about two years. And my growth in the last two years is mind-blowing to me and it's only just beginning and i and i can see how much i've got to go and i can see how far i, I will be going and it, it's amazing i love it that's why i love doing what i do um and so yeah if you can have that same passion that same feeling that's that same growth then it's it's limitless it's the the, the sky is your limit literally uh in the chats here we've got action track review change action track review change and off i go marching to the beat <laughs> yeah i love that action track review change action track review That's, now you've put that visualization in my head it's uh gonna sit with me that way as well <laughs> all right well, that pretty much wraps it up for us today uh, we got a few extra minutes but i'm probably gonna wrap it up there so i can go and do my mindset stuff for you know reading my journal and doing all that sort of thing but with that we are coming such a long way i'm so happy with the show and the progress and everything just a reminder to everyone listening here on the podcast the trading plan course is out in beta testing mode we're making the changes it is currently in pre-sale mode um, and will be launched on the monday i think the 2nd of october uh, tickets will be going up um, then you get 50% off for the pre-sale price. Now you can find the description in the link below here. Um, and yeah, journals are back up for sale. We've got some books that have come out and they're getting distributed. So lots of things on the go. The mindset course will be looking to go into beta testing. I'm thinking November. Um, so if you want to get into the beta testing for that, make sure that you join the wait list. I'll also try and check a wait list. Uh, link into the description here. Uh, the beta testing for the trading plan course sold out in like 20 hours. So it does go hot. So if you are interested in it, joining the beta testing for the mindset course, make sure that you get into that waitlist because you'll be the first to get notified. Uh, and that comes with a, a massive discount for giving just a bit of feedback and picking up on my spelling mistakes and editorial mistakes and just things like that. So it can get a little bit more perfected for, for actual launch. So few things in the works looking forward to all the growth and the transformations that are you know already coming out of the trading plan course and the mindset course and everything we have here at the pip side but for now make sure traders you have your books open you have your journals ready to journal you've done your brain warm-ups you know your lot size calculations you are ready you are calm you are waiting for the best trade you're looking for all the potential for those trades like we we're talking about today and yeah let's make sure we go and catch some pips i will be finishing off the week today i will dad duties tomorrow and then on to uh, an afternoon with friends and drinking beer and Oktoberfest and all the fun things. So I'll be back next week uh, with you guys here at the success shift for Tuesday, but until then much love, happy trading and let's grab some points. Bye.